Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 62169, Class Bravo, submitted by witness on Monday, November 19, 2018. Couple experienced large rock thrown and possible bluff charge in Inyo National Forest. Year 2018, season fall, month November, date the 10th, State California, County Inyo. Location details near Green Lake in the Inyo National Forest. Nearest town, Bishop, California. Observed BFRO investigator Charles Lamica transcribed the following initial report from a voice mail left on the BFRO phone system. Confidential information such as last name and phone number have been edited out. Hi, my name is Ron. I'm calling from San Diego, California. I'm a middle school math teacher or math and special education teacher. I was recently over the three week day weekend up in the eastern Sierras hiking at about 12,000 feet. Something happened when I can't explain. I just thought I would call you guys and tell you about it if you're interested. I really can't explain it. It was bizarre, but anyways, thank you very much. Other witnesses too. The reporting party and his girlfriend. Environment, tall pines, steep terrain. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Charles Lamica. I became aware of this case when the reporting party's voicemail was posted on the BFRO investigator's Facebook page. I volunteered to return the call. I made telephone contact with Ron on the evening of 18 November 2018, one week after the initial incident recurred. Ron is a middle school math teacher and an avid fly fisherman. He described himself as the type of guy who doesn't believe in things like Ghost or Bigfoot. He said, I'm skeptical of these things. I can't see or touch. The incident happened near Green Lake. However, it has forced him to release his skepticism. His comments to me are subnized below. My girlfriend and I had a three-day weekend, so we decided to do some fly fishing up on Green Lake. I live in SoCal as it is a seven hour drive for us to reach South Lake in the Inyo National Forest. When we hiked about three miles up to Green Lake, I've been to Green Lake many times in the past. The elevation at South Lake is about 9,000. The trail to Green Lake takes you up past 11,000 feet. So it's pretty steep in places and there are a lot of switchbacks on the trail. We hiked up to Green Lake only to find it was totally frozen over. We decided to hike back down towards another lake in the area and at one point in our hike we stopped to rest and eat some snacks while we were there I had a eerie feeling it caused me to feel cold and shaky and nervous as we were sitting there we suddenly heard a noise of something flying through the air I looked up and saw a huge rock which is probably weighed about 45 pounds coming from above us the rock landed on the trail about 25 yards away from us it wasn't rolling down the hillside. Its trajectory indicated to me it had been thrown down the hillside. At about the same time, in, instant, uh, we heard a very distinct animal-like grunting noise, but it was far louder than any animal grunt I've ever heard. We also detected a really foul smell. I particularly remember this foul smell because one moment we were just breathing really fresh mountain air and the Next moment, there was this awful smell. About the same time, we could hear heavy footsteps coming down the hillside toward us. The terrain is very steep in that area, many tall pines. We couldn't see very far above us, but we could hear something was coming down towards us. I've encountered many bears in the area in the past, and I immediately grew concerned a bear was approaching us. I yelled something like, it's a bear. The whole thing was so frightening and unexpected that we started running. My girlfriend left jacket, my sunglasses, and our food there and we just started running down the switchback trail. 
The jacket and sunglasses cost over $100, and we never went back for them. As we kept running down the switchbacks, we could hear the heavy footsteps following us. Whatever it was, it didn't stay on the trail and follow the switchback as we did. Instead, it cut straight down the hillside, as just movements were loud enough for us to hear it. We ran for about five minutes before realizing the thing was no longer following us. We just went back to the trailhead, got in our car, and left. This was the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life. I'm confused and puzzled by the whole thing. I'm not the kind of guy who believes in things like ghosts or Bigfoots, but I can't explain what happened to us. That's why I reached out to you guys at the BFRO. In many, in my follow-up questions, I asked Ron about the rock he saw flying through there. He said he guessed it was about 45 pounds. He felt it was definitely too big for a human to have thrown. It wasn't smooth and round. It was more angular and sharp edges, which he assumes is why he heard it flying through the air before he actually saw it. Ron also stated that in hindsight, although he initially was afraid there was being stalked by a bear, he felt the whole thing was unlike any normal bear behavior he had ever experienced. He now believes it was not a bear. During my conversation, I found Ron's story to be believable and compelling. I got the impression that he is a person of analytic mindset, which ex experienced something unusual and now wants to understand why, how, of what happened. He didn't seem to be looking for attention, but wanted information instead. I explained to Ron that Sasquatches will sometimes engage in territorial displays, such as rock throwing, tree shaking, or angry vocalizations. <clears throat> Bluff charges are, have also been reported in which squatches seem to be intent on chasing people away from the area. Based on Ron's description of the moving noises he heard, I suspect he and his girlfriend were on the receiving end of a bluff charge. After seeing a rock thrown in their direction, they heard a loud grunting noise, smelled a foul order, odor, and heard heavy footsteps coming th their way. I find it interesting that they ran down the switchbacks the maker of all this commotion ran straight down the hillside, cutting across the switchbacks, which makes it be believed this was a bluff charge rather than some type of predatory behavior. If a Sasquatch or any other large animal was running straight downhill, it would have easily caught up the humans who were sticking to the switchback trail. Since it never did catch up with Ron and his girlfriend, I can only assume that the suspect... S S Sasquatch was merely trying to scare them away rather than want to actually catch up with them. When you find the signs of Sasquatch in so many areas of the world, it will absolutely make your head spin. Or at a minimum, you will ask yourself, what the heck is this thing? Red glowing eyes. Many reports of red glowing eyes in which the eyes are reported to be sometimes orange or white usually seen at the eight foot level but sometimes reported as low as a foot off the ground when Bigfoot tries not to be seen. Many people see the red eyes peering through windows or tree lines and shifting back and forth. The eyes can be yellow, green, or blue too. Squatch eyes illuminate at night and give them outstanding night vision abilities. Report number 2115, Class Alpha. Date, May 19, 1994. Nearest town, Boulder, Utah. Observed, in June 1996, I was hiking in the Escalante Wilderness on a bench between the Gulch and Deer Creek. There are a number of stony rises between the two areas, and my friend and I had to cross the bench in order to make camp at Deer Creek. As we hiked in a westward direction, the sun was directly overhead. I was the first to notice the movement at the top of the rise. We were less than a mile from the top and pointed it out to my companion. We wondered what it could be. I have hiked in this area and never seen anyone up on the bench during this time of day over the previous 15 years. And though this had a human shape, it was too large and it was white. I mean, paper white, not ca Caucasian. The creature appeared to be pacing as it looked for something. Suddenly, 
I became very aware it had spotted us as it ducked behind the rocky outcroppings and was obscured from our view. As we were hiking toward the area to cross the bench, we observed as we got closer that the area where the creature stood that it was on the highest point and would require all of our climbing skills to reach. Not knowing what it was, if it was dangerous or wanted to be left alone, or if it was even there any longer, and being nearly exhausted from our hike and almost out of water, I decided we would hike over the bench and down to Deer Creek. About a half of a mile down the westward slope, we both had that feeling that we were being watched. We both turned and looked up to, to that area where we had previously sighted the creature, and it was watching us again, then quickly ducked down so we could not see it. I wrote about it in my journal, which I have kept for many years, but I'm writing from memory now. I never thought of this as being a Bigfoot sighting, as I hadn't heard anyone ever describe a white Bigfoot. But a friend of mine, who is a Bigfoot enthusiast, directed me to this site. I'm still not sure what it was, though I am relatively sure it wasn't human. Too big and entirely white. Also noticed, no, other witnesses, two witnesses hiking. Time and conditions, this happened about 1,300 to 1,400 hours. It was clear and dry, and the area of the sighting was clear of trees or brush. Stone formations did obscure the view of the creature. Environment, this was between Deer Creek and the Gulch, north of the Escalante River, but south of Boulder. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go.